Hi everybody. Um, today we're going to be talking about the fifth week of Lent. Uh, it's called Debrazates, which means Mount of Olives. And we're going to start in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. So as we've been talking about the past um, several weeks now here on the YOTC platform, our church has provided a very um, helpful structure uh, to help us organize our thoughts, our reflections, as we move through the eight weeks of Lent. Um, and this is um, purposeful and intentional by the church fathers so that we can um, fully um, realize and, and, and fully take advantage of um, the different aspects and the different spiritual benefits of the Lenten season. Uh, so, so just a quick recap, yeah, week one was Zawarada, um, which means he descended from above. And we, we reflect here on how um, God, the God of the heavens, who created the heavens and the earth, came to earth in the form of man in order to save us. Um, and then week two is holy or Qaddist. And here we reflect on how God is holy himself, but then he calls us to be holy or set apart. Um, and week three um, is Mukrab, uh, and this is temple. Um, here we're reminded of Christ's passion for his temple, uh, but this also um, reminds us that in our own body is also a temple of God. So just like we're asked to honor the temple of God or the church, we're also um, uh, supposed to you know, honor our own bodies because it is not our own, but belongs to God. Week four, which was last week, was Mazagu or the paralytic. Here, we are reminded of Christ's power of healing, um, but um, other important um, facets of last week were the, this concept of being one to be made well, uh, the desire to get better, and then our own participation um, in um, our healing process as, um, as uh, God does the rest. And then that gets us to this week, week five, um, Debra Zayt. And week five is, um, Debra Zayt is about the second coming. Um, and um, I'll be honest, this is not a topic that is easy to talk about. Um, Christ delivered a message to the disciples when they asked him, what will it be like when you come again? Um, and, and, and Christ lays it all out on Matthew chapter 24. And we'll actually read a, a portion of Matthew chapter 24, and then um, we will um, um, kind of expand on that message today. So... Uh, Matthew chapter 24, uh, I'm going to read uh, verses 3 to 8. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming? And at the end of the, at the, end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and the kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of sorrows. So you can see that by hearing this, uh, many of these things, you know, in the world are already happening, right? Um, we have seen nation rise against nation. Um, we are seeing a war right now in, uh, between Ukraine and, and Russia. Uh, we see earthquakes and other natural disasters all the time. Um, we see various types of diseases, including the current pandemic. Um, and these signs are things that really all are all around us it's it's the current world that we live in and you know we we talk about the second coming um and we reflect on the second coming not because it's like an easy topic to talk about uh but it's really important to recognize the signs and to know um how to prepare right um however we the first thing we have to do in kind of reflecting on that verse is just spend some time acknowledging that it is it is overwhelming um, to think about, right? Um, there's a world that, that we know that we're comfortable in and the idea that things you know may get worse um, and then um, and then this earth as we, we know it will one, once one day be gone. That's a very um, heavy and very overwhelming topic, right? It's very uncomfortable. 
And the main reason why it causes so much discomfort and angst is because it is out of completely out of our control, right? Um, it's not something we can do anything about. Um, and, and, and so what that means is that this discomfort, um, this feeling like this not in our stomach feeling is very natural, right? It's not that we're, um, you know, bad people for feeling uncomfortable or a, a bit anxious about and when thinking and reminiscing on, on, on all of these uh, signs of the end of times. Um, so it's understandable. Um, and, you know, considering that what, what we know here will once be no more and and to imagine that what we're witnessing now is truly the beginning of the end. And to think that, um, you know, things in this world can get worse, you know, can can honestly be depressing. And all of it, all of our reactions are, um, you know, are very understandable. And, um, and it's because Christ recognizes this that he makes a very important point. Um, you may have missed it when I was reading it. You may have been, you know, taken by the uh, wars and the earthquakes and the and and, and the diseases and, and things like that. But but there's a key part um, that Christ mentions um, in the verse I read above, which is, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. See that you are not troubled. So, you know, Christ is, we know, fully God, and he's also fully human, right? Um, he understands our emotions. He understands the idea of wars and diseases and natural disasters, how they can provoke anxiety. So he says, see that you are not troubled. This reminds me of a very similar verse from John chapter 14, verse 1, which says, let not your hearts be troubled, right? God does not say, don't have fear. God does not say, don't have anxiety, right? Sometimes um, we think that living a righteous life, um, living a life where we are trying our best to devote our lives to Christ will always lead to being relaxed and happy and satisfied. Um, but that's really not the case, right? Um, the life of a Christian um, is a life of challenges and trials and tribulations, right? Um, but what Christ teaches us are the tools for endurance and resilience. Um, and we do that by relying on him, um, by remembering that he is faithful, that he is powerful, and that he's merciful, um, and that he longs to share his kingdom with us in um, for eternity see that your hearts are not troubled. So how do we do that, you know, practically, right? Um, how do we remain calm um, in a world that is full of so much turmoil, right? Um, and it's really by um, inviting Christ in to every trial and tribulation that we are facing, right? Not facing it alone and um, inviting Christ in the midst of our, our troubles um, is, is the way to do that, right? Um, so if you're going through, you know, a physical ailment, um, go to God like Job did, um, when he was covered with, you know, ulcers, right? He says, um, for I know that my redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know that in my flesh, I shall see God. I love that. Um, and if you don't know, not familiar with Job's story, go go check it out. But there, he went through incredible amounts of trials, and um, he remained, you know, uh, fervently devoted to honoring God. And it is that that allowed him to endure through these difficulties and come out glorious at the end, right? Um, and then, you know, in times if you are facing, you know, mental health challenges, um, Saint Peter mentions in First Peter chapter five verse seven. Um, cast all your anxiety on him beca because he cares for us. Cast all your anxiety from him, on him. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for us, right? So again, what this reminds us is, um, again, sometimes people just say that part of cast your anxiety on him. Um, and again, forget that second part of the verse because he cares for us, right? He genuinely cares. He genuinely wants to be you know involved in our lives but we must invite him in right remember the idea that you know 
um, Christ gives complete independent free will. And so if we are not inviting him in, um, you know, he's not going to force his way into our hearts, right? He's not going to force his way into our um, situations, our difficulties, right? Uh, so it's really important to be intentional and taking, take it, you know, take all of those things that keep you up at night, um, that, you know, make you panic and that your heart race, take all of those things to God um, consistently, right? And invite Christ in types of uh, times of deep sorrow, like Hannah did in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. Um, she, the Bible says, she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me. Um, and goes on to talk about how she longs for her son. And so no matter how big or small your concern is, whether you're worried about an exam or quite literally the end of the world, um, you know, take all those concerns to him because he understands. Um, and, and why is this so important? Um, so we, when we come back to the second coming, um, you know, if we do not have God um, helping us process the gravity of this moment um, and, and just the, the, the anxiety of everything that, that's, that's happening all around the world, what's, what's likely um, going to happen is that um, we will be led by a kind of fear that is debilitating, a kind of fear that's consuming like, like fire. And as humans, you know, what do we do when we're consumed with so much fear and distress and anxiety? Um, you know, if we don't have the right solution, the right source, if we don't go to God, then we run to the world to, to, to numb it or to forget about it, right? We fill our, our um, lives with endless and meaningless noise. Um, that could be doom scrolling on social media while lying in bed. Um, uh, you know, uh, drinking a great deal to ease the pain, um, surrounding ourselves with people who offer surface level conversation, endless amounts of shows on Netflix and YouTube. You know, we, we, we've all been there, right? The list goes on. We've all been there. And the more we're numb, the more time passes us by and the more we drift away um, from the source of our solution who is, you know, obviously God. And, um, and I'll note here that... Um, as we as we um, work on um, realizing, you know, what it means to um, make ourselves, you know, um, uh, as close to God as possible, inviting and involving Christ in our lives. Um, as we learn to do that, it's important to realize that it's a process, um, right? And so uh, it's not possible, you know, to go from uh, um, these, these sort of habits, numbing habits, if you will, um, to, to all the way to just, you know, um, always going to God with, with every problem that we have. And so that that's a journey and, and, and be um, kind of patient and great, you know, have some grace for yourself as you're getting up to that. Um, so, you know, if, if you have every intention of you know, praying because you're so nervous or, or anxious about something, uh, but you instead spend the night, you know, scrolling on social media. Um, don't beat yourself up for that, right? Don't. Um, that that's a, that's kind of another, you know, um, evil um, me message, right? That you're not worthy. You're not. Uh, you will never make it. Like that. That's um, you know. That's kind of uh, Satan's voice, right? Um, so it's important to acknowledge. Okay, I'm gonna make today better than yesterday and I'm going to move forward is really the right type of attitude to have that's more um, compassionate and 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 graceful to, for yourself right and it's the same kind of compassion and and uh, mercy that God shows us so learn to kind of show that for yourself as well as you move forward so the more you're uh, frustrated with yourself the more you're um, you know angry with yourself because you're not making the right type of progress the more likely you're gonna, um, you know, not try um, because you think it's, it's you'll never make it, right? Uh, so it's just really important to have that to have that patience uh, for yourself. Um, so the, the the last thing I'll note here is that uh, we might also uh, find ourselves turning to false prophets. Um, and another key verse from Matthew chapter twenty four verse four is that it says, "Take heed that no one deceives you." Um, and verse eleven says. Uh, then many 
false prophets will rise up and deceive many, all right? Um, so this is a time where um, there is really um, a battle for our soul, right? Um, there is the message that Christ provides us, which is a message of life, a message of endurance and resilience, uh, and, and, and eventually a message of hope, right? Um, but um, but there's also like another force that, uh, of um, false prophets, right? And not things that are uh, overtly evil or terrible, but, but these are, you know, um, essentially saying things that sound generally okay, but over a long period of time actually pull us away from God. So the, the question is, how do we, how do we recognize these, right? Um, this new age spirituality, um, you know, it's oftentimes filled with buzzwords um, like manifesting and love and light, uh, a sign from the universe, abundance, things like that, right? Um, it's essentially shallower than what we know. Um, false prophets of our generation often sell us a version of Christianity that's watered down, um, that appeals to you um, with the love of Christ without teaching you about the need for repentance, right? Uh, there are promises of abundant joy without clarifying that abundant joy is promised in heaven um, and that we have persecution and trials and tribulations here on earth. Um, so, you know, it feels good to hear those things, um, but it does not lead to a transformed heart. Um, and, and, and so just be, be cautious and guarded about that. Um, messages you hear um, that that make it sound like we're promised an easy path here on earth um, that that if you just believe you know you'll have peace and prosperity um, a, a, a message that makes it seem like our path on earth is like heaven and, and that just was never guaranteed um, on in the bible so uh, but but again I, I will note that you know however Christ is still very merciful right um, I'm not saying all of these to say everything that we will experience is terrible and horrible if we're, if we're believers, right? Um, but because we, we see already in, in our everyday lives that in the midst of sorrow, how much joy Christ can bring, right? And the best example of this is actually the, the, um, the pain of childbirth, mother's experience, <clears throat> which can so serve as um, a symbol of life on earth, right? Um, a symbol of the painful moments that we experience while, while living on earth. But then, you know, those painful moments um, of childbirth are marked with moments of absolute joy when a mother gets to hold her newborn baby. So, you know, we cry sometimes, uh, but then we laugh other times, right? We lose those who are close to us but we had a gift of loving them. Um, we see injustice that frustrates us, but then we have the wisdom and the cooperation to try to tackle it, right? Um, so, you know, life on earth truly is a dichotomy, um, a roller coaster, if you will, that this is very evident from, from what we have all experienced, right? And so we rely on God um, all the time so that um, when we have those moments where we are descending down quickly, precipitously down that roller coaster, um, we pray and we rely on God so that those low moments are only for a short period of time. Um, so again, it's not about avoiding the low moments. They will happen. But when they happen, um, hopefully they're short-lived and we can quickly ascend back to uh, a happier and joyous uh, place. So again, um, the main point of focus for us as we reflect on this um, Deborah Zayt or Mount of Olives holiday, because actually in our church, it's a holiday. It's one of the nine ma minor um, holidays of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. Uh, it's a holiday because ultimately there is an incredible destination, right? Um, St. John um, says the following in Revelations uh, verse 21, ver uh, chapter 21, verse 4, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Think about that. Our forever home, where there will be no more pain, no more sorrow. And my favorite part is that when we get to heaven, if we come brokenhearted, 
God will wipe away every tear. That's amazing, right? An incredible place that's you know, beyond imagination, right? A place where we can finally rest after a race well run here on earth, right? So we're in the midst of like halfway through Lent, right? And we are all anticipating the celebration of Easter in a few weeks. And just we like we anticipate Easter and look forward to that and are, are persevering through the Lenten season, um, we also wait in anticipation of the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we, since we don't know the hour of his arrival, we wait not in slumber, but we wait while being alert and prepared. Glory to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen.